Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is John Mulhern. Um, I'm the principal in the Chagas College of Amenity Horticulture, and we're located here in the beautiful setting that is the National Botanic Gardens. Um, we're delighted you joined us for our program. This event is designed to give you information about what we do here in our college uh, as regards our horticulture courses. The format for this afternoon is that it's on Zoom. We thank you for joining us on Zoom. You may notice that uh, you've got a prompt for this session to be recorded and we'll use this uh, for future promotional issues. We'd also ask you to turn off your camera and to mute your microphone. So thank you for joining us. Um, we're here in what we call room three in our still new uh, building, I would say. This building was constructed uh, about eight years ago um, and it still feels very new to us. It's situated bank smack uh, in the Botanic Gardens um, and it's overlooking the Tolka River and the Rose Garden. The National Botanic Gardens is uh, the jewel in North Dublin, we would say. It's a repository for horticulture. It's, it's set up over 200 years and what uh, goes on here in terms of training is, is immense. Um, apprentices have been trained here since 1812 and Chagask is proud to carry on that tradition. So this afternoon we want to impress upon you some of the work that we do that's connected with this fantastic site here in Glasnevin in the National Botanic Gardens. When you think about horticulture, you know, horticulture is everywhere. What you eat, what you sit on, the buildings that we, we live in. Horticulture has contributed in no small way towards everything that surround, surrounds us. There's an increasing passion for the outdoor space currently. And we're delighted that we can fulfill some small role in providing good education and formal training in that respect. Um, we're, we're lucky to be in, in the National Botanic Gardens. It's the premier spot for horticulture in Ireland and Chagask is here for many, many decades providing that training. Um, we do this in conjunction with the OPW. The OPW, the Office of Public Works, is responsible for running the National Botanic Gardens. So Chagas works hand in hand with the National Botanic Gardens in providing that training. We also work with our uh, colleagues in Chagask in Ashtown. Ashtown is a, is, a, is a premier site, it's a food research facility and it's located about six kilometers from here. There, we have access to about just short of 20 acres where we can work, we can landscape, and we can train our students in the areas of horticulture also. So between the National Botanic Gardens here in Glasnevin, which constitutes approximately 60 acres, and between Ashtown, we've quite a big repository of area, outdoor space. in horticulture. That course runs typically from September through to June. Um, we cover about eight or nine different modules and it's all about plant knowledge, plant identification, plant protection, plant propagation, and, and a certain amount of plant use. And we would say in our level five construct that the student is getting a very good basic knowledge, foundation knowledge on plant uh, plant specimens. What happens in level six when students move on to second year is that people move into different areas. And our four main areas that people move into in terms of horticulture is landscaping, nursery stock, fruit and veg, food production, and turf grass. And that's what we're gonna hear deliberations from with my colleagues now in a few minutes. Also, in conjunction with our 
third level partner, which is Waterford Institute of Technology, and we're happy to partner with WIT with a degree program, which is run at level seven. And level seven brings together the science of horticulture, the production of horticulture, and the business of horticulture. So we see students that, uh, that, that, that graduate through the levels up to degree level, coming out of our college with the National Botanic Gardens and the OPW with a very rounded qualification in plant knowledge, scientific knowledge, and business knowledge of horticulture. And that's, that's the package that we, we talk about. And we're going to give you some sense of how that works today um, by showing you a, sh a few short videos and by having a Q&A session with, uh, with my colleagues here. Okay, at this point, I'd like to introduce my colleagues. Um, and my first colleague is uh, Louise Jones. And Louise uh, has been with us teaching for, for, for a few years. So I might just ask Louise to introduce what you do and what areas that you, you, you follow here in the college. Thanks, John. Um, so I'm Louise Jones. I'm one of the lecturers here with Chagas in the National Botanic Gardens. Um, I teach an array of subjects in horticulture on our level five, level six, and level seven course. Yep. Um, my area of specialty is in landscape design and construction, as well as other areas um, such as plant materials and plant identification. Yeah, so a lot of your work is, is, is in plant knowledge and then using that plant knowledge to, to teach students around the area of landscaping, construction, garden design, drawing, and then ultimately constructing gardens. And that's very popular. Very, very popular. Every yeah. year we have a large group of students um, take part in that, the yep. modules that we teach in that area. Excellent. Thanks very much, Louise. Uh, my next colleague that I want to, to, to ask about their background is Chris Heavey. And Chris, your area is, among others, nursery stock production. Yes, nursery stock production. And um, at level five, plant propagation, which I suppose is a precursor to nursery yeah. stock production, yeah. and fruit and veg production at level five as well. And then at level seven, part of the garden management, I teach part of fruit and veg and, and garden management. So um, they would be the, the subjects that I'd be involved in. Yeah, a lot of people are pursuing nursery stock production that will find careers in, in the nursery stock sector. Plantsmanship is very important. Yeah, what, ha what happens at level six is we go in, we get more detailed in terms of, or specialized more so in terms of um, that nursery yeah. sort of area. So while plant, plant propagation at level five is a great way of learning a general sort of plant propagation module, um, you can then specialize into the nursery industry, I suppose, and yeah. what, what a career could mean in a nursery, in the nursery industry, where you might be able to go within that at level six. Perfect. We might come back to that because I'm sure there'll be questions on specifics uh, shortly. I'll turn to my next colleague, which is James Brady. And James, among other things, you're involved in the food sector, the fruit and veg sector. Could you tell us a small bit about what you're involved in in the college, James? Yes, so um, I teach the level five fruit and veg production and also the level six market gardening um, uh, module. So basically it, it focuses on um, food production and um, soil management and um, crop management and um, integrated pest management um, and sustainability. It's become very popular. The, the whole food side, like horticulture is made up both of the amenity side and the commercial side. And we often refer to the commercial side, uh, uh, but it's food production, essentially. Essentially that is, John. Yeah. And I suppose it, it's never been more important that people are kind of focusing on where their food comes from. People want to grow their own. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And, and you can see that from the numbers on our course and, and the popularity that they are. It's become very popular. Yeah, and we'll, we'll come back to that point. So fruit and veg is, is a very strong area now in the college. And we've seen that trend developing over the last couple of years, yeah. Thanks very much, James. My next colleague is Paddy Smith. And Paddy, among other things, teaches on sports turf science and maintenance. Maybe tell us a small bit about that area, Paddy. Yeah, thank you, John. Uh, my name is Paddy. I'm teaching um, mostly in relation to mechanization and mechanization, looking at it from a landscape point of view, a food point of view, and especially in uh, turf grass. And I'm delivering turf grass to our level five, mostly to our level six students and students coming in in from the industry and to our level seven students as well. Very good. Paddy, again, it's a very important area in terms of sports turf. A lot of people employed in that in the sector in Ireland. And uh, we'll come back maybe and ask a few questions from the chat about how to get into that industry specifically. Thank you for that, colleagues. Uh, at this point, uh, we will like to show you um, a short video clip. And this video clip is about eight or nine minutes long. And it basically showcases our college and the different enterprise mix that's in it. It features the four speakers, and it's, uh, each speaker has about two minutes 
under different areas. So we'd ask you to sit back and enjoy this. And remember, we're looking for questions, so don't be afraid to send them through on the chat function. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody. I'm Louise Jones, and I'm one of the lecturers here based in the National Botanic Gardens for Chagas in the College of Amenity Horticulture. One of the areas I specialise in is landscape design, construction and maintenance. And as part of our programmes offered here within the college, we offer many different courses from level five up to level seven. And within that, there's many modules that cover the aspects of landscape design, construction and maintenance. At level five, we offer a module called garden design where we teach students the skill of drafting, so hand drawing beautiful designs using graphics for fictional clients, but still based on a very important client brief. And these drawings are produced where the students at the end of the module have a beautiful portfolio that they can use in the future. Moving on then, we look at um, landscape construction and maintenance at level five, which is a hands-on module where students get to undertake practicals looking at different skills from setting out, paving, timber features, water features and so on. So using the materials as our ingredients within the landscape. Moving on then, one of the areas that you can specialise in at level six is landscape design and construction. Here we have um, more studio based drawing projects where we use a variety of different types of sites, private gardens, urban spaces and even sometimes just concentrating on planting design. And this is mixed and backed up with practical skills in relation to construction. Moving on then in level seven, we concentrate in the landscape design module with WIT. Here we specialize and look more at the theory background of design and the history of landscape design. So looking back for lots of inspiration and we concentrate on more public and semi-public spaces. All of these modules in landscape design and construction link with the ongoing landscape maintenance and work that happens in our Ashtown campus. And here over the years, the students have helped us develop the grounds through model gardens that they build from scratch every year, planting schemes that we're adding to all of the time and ongoing maintenance techniques. So here in the botanics, we have lots to offer in the landscape design and construction maintenance. The current year has been slightly different and we're offering it through a blended approach this year. So what I mean by blended is the theory of our courses are being offered online. At home, you can log in on your computer and we offer the lectures online, live. We will give all supporting notes and resources through a platform called Moodle. Our practical elements then are offered face to face in Ashtown, but in small groups this year. So we can have social distancing and still cover our practicals and get our hands dirty. The studio part is slightly different. We are working the studio as a virtual studio where you will watch demonstration videos recorded by myself and my other colleagues at home in your own time. And then we will have tutorials together online where we will go through different drawing techniques. So here in the college, and with Chagas, we have lots to offer in the area of landscape design and construction. And if you have any questions, get in touch. Hello, Christopher Heavey. I'm a lecturer in the Botanic Gardens in Glasnevin in the College of Amenity Horticulture. And I suppose my remit encompasses nursery stocks, plant propagation, and all that that entails, all of the various parts of that. And um, so, we're going to have a look at some of the facilities that we have and that we use on a daily basis for teaching. And the first one we're going to look at is right here and it's the tree nursery in Ashtown. And the tree nursery in Ashtown is something that's developing over the past two years or so. And as you can see, we have some reasonably mature trees and we plan on using this as part of our blended learning scheme to be able to transplant trees, to be able to prune trees, to be able to stake trees, tie trees and so on. So all of that is, is part of what we do every day and it's also because of the situation that we're in now part of a blended learning scheme where you will be here for some of the practical elements of it and for some of the assessments but the learning aspect of it in terms of the theory will all be produced online and produced very well and very professionally online. So we might move on in now to the glass house and have a, a look at plant propagation. This 
just before we go, is part of the nursery stock production at level six in the main, but it's also used for, for many, many other subject matters as well. So here we are in the glass house, as promised, and this is the glass house in Ashtown. We have a, a couple of other glass houses in the botanic gardens that we also use for plant propagation. And, uh, and this is basically where our plant propagation is done, and it's where our nursery um, education is, is undertaken, really, the practical end of our nursery education. So we're looking at plants that we take cuttings from. Lots and lots of salvia is here, beautiful, beautiful colours. And we're going to take a quick look over at the mist unit. And in the mist unit, we have some cuttings off this Romnia, which is a, a beautiful plant named after two Irishmen. Um, so we'll have a quick look at that and see the facility that's there. And that should give us a good picture of what happens from a nursery's perspective in terms of education here. This is the mist unit. And this is where we propagate a number of our cuttings. So this is one of two we have. This is in Ashtown. We have another one in the Botanic Gardens. And we also employ other systems as well for producing cuttings. So you'll see those systems in operation, um, depending on what course you're doing. And I showed you this plant, uh, Romnia culturae, earlier on there. So cuttings were taken off this plant and they were placed in here. And there they are in the system, sitting in a tray, waiting at the moment to root, and hopefully they'll be successful. And these are the sorts of things that you learn when you are doing any of the courses related to nursery stocks or to plant propagation. So without showing you all of the rest, the grafting, the division, the layering, all of these things that we do, um, I hope we've given you a, a reasonable picture. And remember that the lecturing part, the theory part is online, and the practical parts, and some of the practical parts, and some of the assessments are done in situ here in a safe um, environment. Hi, my name is James Brady and I'm a lecturer here in the Chagas College of Community Horticulture National Botanic Gardens. One of the streams we offer here in the college is food production and as part of this stream we run Le QQI Level 5 Fruit and Veg Production, Level 6 Market Gardening and also our degree programme Level 7 Sustainable Food Production. The courses are structured through a blended learning model where we offer our lectures online and these are recorded and made available through our Moodle platform where students can basically learn at their leisure. The practical elements of the course is run in Chagas Ashton, where we have a extensive fruit and vegetable garden, which consists of a mixed orchard, some fruit plantations, and also some vegetable beds, where students get to apply the skills they learn in the classroom to the, the practical skills in Ashton, where they demonstrate best practice in relation to sustainability, crop husbandry, plant management, and integrated pest management. My name is Paddy Smith. I'm a college teacher in the National Botanic Gardens. I'm involved in the delivery of a range of sports turf subjects across different programs aimed at both full-time and part-time students. In 2017, this new golf facility was constructed here in Ashtown, consisting of three holes, each green and tee box are built on a sand compost root zone with modern drainage and an automatic irrigation system to replicate what is present on modern sports turf facilities here in Ireland. In the building of the Turf Academy, grasses were selected to give the students as much exposure as possible to sustainable approaches to turf grass management. The Turf Grass Academy is used as an essential part in the training and extension program across all courses that we teach at the college at certificate and degree level. Throughout the year, students have the opportunity to learn all of the skills that are associated with modern sports turf care. This includes the setup, operation and care of a wide range of precision mowers. Root zone management is an integral part of sustainable turf care. In all our courses, students will be exposed to all modern methods of cultural operations, including top dressing, aeration, decompaction, nutrition and overseeding. Students from our turf grass programs go to work in different sports turf locations at home and abroad. Many of our students go to work in the US, UK and continental Europe, mainly in golf course facilities. In Ireland there are many opportunities and openings in the management of golf courses, sports pitches, multi-sports facilities and across the sports turf service sector. That uh, short video clip, that short video clip uh, included uh, my four colleagues who joined us this afternoon. So what you've seen is a, a summary of uh, the areas of work around landscaping, the areas of work around uh, nursery stock production, around our fruit and veg garden, and around sports turf. Um, 
because people always ask, you know, at, at, at our event, what is horticulture? So what we've just shown you is horticulture. And that's how it manifests itself um, in day-to-day -day practical working. So you saw some lovely images there uh, of the design. Uh, you saw some lovely images of the, the growth of plants, the growth of trees in the tree nursery, and as Chris espoused, in the outside environment of the tree nursery in Ashtown and inside in, in the new glass houses over there. Um, you saw James Brady uh, involved with students who were working hard in the background in the fruit and veg garden. And you saw Paddy Smith and some of his colleagues working on the newly formed sports turf area that we operate over in our facility in Ashtown. So that gives you some semblance of what we, what we do and what my colleagues are involved in on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, I just might turn to Louise um, and, and maybe, uh, maybe drill down a small bit into, into the area. Earlier, you mentioned, Louise, that you were involved in teaching landscaping across level five and level six and level seven. So just in terms of, we'll say, garden design. Garden design is a popular module. It's a, it's a module that people take on board um, maybe as a single module, or they develop careers in. Could you maybe tell us a small bit about what, what's involved in that area? Yeah, so at level five, the module is called uh, Garden Design, John. It can be part of the full certificate in horticulture, or you can opt to do it as a single module. So really, it's an introduction to garden design where we're teaching students the drafting skills, so the drawing skills. Drawing skills, yeah. How to draw a master plan, survey a site, and select plant materials. But it really is an introduction level. You will get a portfolio at the end. Um, and does people do, do people need drawing skills to come onto that program? Is there is there a need for any technical drawing skills? No, honestly, all of the drafting we work with you. We teach you how to do the technical drawing side. You um, have to have a love for plants. Yep. Okay. Have an eye for observation in relation mm. to landscape design and what materials and destruction and um, plant materials that are out there. Well, really, we use different tools to actually do the drawing. Yeah, and in your own career, Louise, because this is an area that you followed yourself, and you were very much interested in plants as a young person, and uh, then you brought that through. Maybe tell us a bit how you, yeah. you furnished your own qualification with your love of plants and drawing. Yeah, so um, I suppose uh, I was influenced by horticulture from a young age. I grew up in North County, Dublin, so surrounded by lots of some of the best horticultural growers that we have and was always very aware of that, where food came from. And um, if you were looking for me as a child, I was outside picking plants or looking at the rocks. I love yeah. nature, love the environment. Yeah. So when I finished school, um, John, when I was doing my Leaving Cert, I hooked up with a career guidance teacher. Yeah. She introduced me to Chagas. Um, and from that, that led me on. I did a diploma in horticulture first. So you met a good career guidance teacher. I did, I and did. That's, she that's, was very that's good. A message very, to, very that's good. a message yeah. to send out to our young and people thank you today. To her. <laughs> um, so that led me on to a diploma in horticulture. Very good. Um, which really was sort of an introduction to all of horticulture. Yeah. It was at that stage where I realized that I really was passionate about the landscape design and landscape architecture. And I went on and I did a level eight in landscape horticulture. You did. Um, you did placement here as well, didn't I you? I did. I did yeah. some placement here in the Botanic Gardens mm -hmm. as well as with some... Um, no uh, doubt that was a big help. A big, big help. I loved plants. Yeah. Loved plants, loved people. Yeah. And then I suppose I went down the route of education because I love lifelong learning. Yeah. I did a master's in education and I'm teaching here in Chagas uh, a good while Very in good. lots of different we, areas. We won't ask you how many years. Um, <laughs> this, this year is so different, Louise, in that you, like we're situated in, here in our beautiful room which overlooks the Tolka and, and the Rose Garden and the National Botanic Gardens. But briefly, how is your teaching different this year and how are you managing? Yeah, so obviously we were maybe forced to change slightly, which has worked quite well for us. And um, the point of view is that we had no choice. So we are working blended learning this year. Blended so is the big thing, yeah. What we're doing is all of our lectures or theory I'm offering online through Zoom. Yep. So the students can lo log on for a live lecture. Yeah, similar to this. There. Yeah, similar to what we're doing here. The great thing now, though, is that all of our lectures and so on, we're recording them. Yep. So we have these recordings and lots of resources available online. So students can log in at any time in the evenings, John, and learn at their own pace. Yeah. The great thing at the moment, because horticulture is so outdoors, we're still able to have our practicals in small pods, okay, really, really important that we still are getting to meet each other and um, every second week, yeah. we're going on plant walks, doing our construction skills. Yeah. Uh, studio though is a virtual, 
yeah. studio and we're doing that through training videos and then meeting live online. Yeah, no, that's well said. I mean, a, a lot of our students would on average, I suppose, come in here one and a half, two days a week, maybe to do some practical outdoor, socially distanced practicals yeah. with their own tool sets, fully PPE'd up, uh, and they're, they're, they're it's been done quite quite well. I would and we're say. getting really yeah. positive feedback from our current students. We've got students very good feedback because yeah. it's been new to them as well. Yeah. This is yeah. both a virtual classroom, and we are getting positive feedback. Yeah, they're loving the resources. Yeah. Just a quick question then, when you move on to level six, uh, we introduce the element of construction. Uh, so a lot of your students that move on to second year level six advanced cert, they're actually building gardens. Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, so when you move on to the level six, yeah, you're concentrating more on landscape design and construction. construction yeah. So every year the students will learn different construction skills and using landscape machinery in Ashton. What we always do is we build a garden from scratch. That's students true. as a team, project-based management design yeah. the garden and they build it and usually we try to have it finished for our opening day in March April yeah. so we can show it off but it's a great learning experience yeah. for students because they and get to manage the project themselves. So. Perfect and, and it's fair to say again people might say do I need building skills going into those courses do I need to be a mason do I need to be a carpenter? No no everybody like you would start at your level five where you get an introduction to yeah. those building skills and then at level six, we're just going into the more depth. Yeah. And really everybody that's coming in usually are starting fresh in horticulture. They're starting from scratch. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. may the odd time have a few part-time students yes. that are coming in from the industry yeah. that would have experience, but they're bringing that experience to the classroom to all of us. And that's a and good mix. With that's us. a good mix. Yeah. Experiential yeah. learning has been brought into the, into the, into the construct there. Louise, thanks very much thanks for that. We'll come back to some questions that I'm sure we'll find on chat. If I can turn to Chris, um, Chris Evie, uh, and we saw a lovely video of Chris uh, in the tree nursery in Ashtown, but also then he moved into the indoor mist unit area, which is the indoor nursery area. So just your own, your own story, Chris, in terms of, we'd say, where you came from in terms of horticulture and where you are now, maybe for the people watching. Well, I started as a student when Solus was called Anko. So Ooh, that's back in the day, a long time back. Yeah. And uh, I came in here having done a, a teaser sort of a course, I suppose, really. I came in here to the Botanic Gardens in 1986 or thereabouts and uh, did a three year course when there was only one class, um, 25 students at the time. And um, worked in Chagas in Concilia or in Forest Taluntis in Concilia, as it was at the time, for a number of years. Went to follow the career path in terms of education. I suppose, went uh, to UCD, did a degree in landscape architecture in UCD, and uh, came back and have recently then finished the master's or completed the master's in um, um, polyethylene films, which we won't go into. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's my career path. And uh, again, a bit like Louise, I've always enjoyed, I, I love plants, and anybody who knows me um, knows that I have a great passion for plants and for growing, um, and I love talking. <laughs> it's a very good no, it's a very, so, you, you, it works indeed. well and, and you're a great communicator and it's a very good story because you started off at, at the early levels of, of learning and moved right up to a master's qualification yeah, what would we call a level four what now call that's, a level four and you moved yeah, up to level nine start. and we see a lot of our students that graduate through those levels in our present construct yeah and we help them a lot and we also have away. students coming in that don't ever realize they will exactly. graduate how up many along people that line? have come in here at level five component and have emerged with the degree yeah i mean yeah. It, it happens every year and yeah. um, it's it's a great route to they follow. come in to test it and they they love it they do. and yeah. they, they follow the ladder up a lot yeah. like in your, in your area plant propagation nursery stock production there's lots of people that come on board just to do plant propagation for example at level five as a single component i'd say of any of the modules we run it, maybe fruit and veg is the same but it gets booked out very early because yeah. people are coming in from outside just to do that module it's on a wednesday morning it's three hours in the normal construct. It's online, obviously, at the minute, and we get a great following. We do, and pe people want to, whether they're going to use it as a career opportunity or whether they're going to use it at home in their own gardens, they want to learn about how to sow seed, how to take a cutting, how to graft a plant, maybe, how to grow an apple tree, you know, all of those things that are included inside in that. But like that, those skills, they work well in the garden at home, but they're also skills that the nursery stock sector is looking for. They're the basic skills that are absolutely necessary to set you on that path, you yeah. know, up along to, to management level ultimately. But if you don't know how to manage yeah. a, a graft or a cutting, 
at an early point, how, how on earth are you going to manage a nursery later on? So it sets you on that path yeah. and it allows you to understand the basics and the fundamentals necessary. And of course, a place like this is fantastic for that, full of plants, full of grafted trees, full of the best things that you could possibly find in horticulture sitting all around us every day. Indeed, and in the 60 acres that's here in the National Botanic Gardens, which our students have full access to as students, and they're brought around methodically by our teachers and by our uh, colleagues in the OPW, showed around the outside grounds, but also in the glass houses. You were pictured in the video in one of our new glass houses in Ashton. Maybe tell us briefly about what that glass house is used for in Ashton. Well, there's a million euro investment in a glass house, a new glass house in Ashton. So that's a massive investment on, on the part of Chagask in education, but also in research. Research and training. And the wonderful thing about research, education, and the advisory end of Chagask is that all three of them work together. So you have advisors out there that are advising the industry, but they're also coming in and helping us in giving lectures and, and knowledge, you know, practical knowledge to students. And then you have the research end of it, which is looking at real life problems, day-to-day -day life problems that nurserymen have. And those nurserymen are presenting those problems to Chagas. Chagas is trying its best to sort them out. And students are observing that interaction between all those different fields. I think you've said it very well. I mean, we're, we're lucky to be embedded in the National Botanic Gardens with, with our colleagues in the OPW and the immense plant repository that's here, uh, but also to be embedded with our research colleagues in Chagask in, in, in Ashtown. And we, we also have a forestry department that's embedded over there, which yeah. is very closely linked to what we do in horticulture as well. So we have a massive, massive resource and Chagask have, 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 have spent a lot of money over there uh, in, in recent times. Thanks for that, Chris. I'll move on to our next area. And in the video, you would have seen uh, our colleague, James Brady, who was uh, embedded, as it were, in the fruit and veg garden, or rather he had some of his students on their knees that were working hard in the veg garden. And as we alluded to earlier, fruit and veg has become very popular, James. And I mean, like plant propagation, it's one of those subjects that people nearly vote for and we fill really, really quickly. Um, so you have, you have a lot of students over there. Just tell us a bit about, we'd say, what's happening in your line of teaching with fruit and veg currently. I suppose you're right, John, in the sense that every year um, we seem to have a, a max out capacity on the course. So, I mean, it's, it's encouraging to show that people are, are wanting to know where their food are produced, where it comes from. Um, and, and the course actually does that with the students. It gives them a, a, a basic grounding of the, how food is produced and the, the practice that goes into to producing that food. So, like, the, the way the class is structured at the moment, we have our, our lecture online and the practicals are based in, in Ashtown. So the students get to develop the, the theory, essentially, that's learned in the classroom, and they, they get to practice that in the, in the, the gardens in Ashtown. Um, and that could be simple skills where it's um, soil management, um, how to, to work the soil, how to improve it. Um, it can be crop management. So what crops do we need to grow? How do we grow them? And how do we look after those crops? So it's, it's the fundamental skills in production that they get to, to kind of really hone in on and, um, and progress throughout the, the development of the course. And again, a similar thread, and I asked uh, Chris and, and, and Louise about it. Do student, students need to know a lot of knowledge before they come into you? Like people say, God, I don't know, would I, would I be able for that level of, of learning? But can you, can you enunciate how, how, how easy that is? It, it's, it, no, the, the answer is, and you don't have to have those skills because they're, they're skills that you can learn and, and learn very quickly. And uh, they're transferable skills, like there's the skills that you'll be learning in fruit and veg that are related to, to plant propagation, you know, um, sowing your crops, how you treat them. So you don't, and you, you learn, um, you learn the, the theory behind in the classroom and you get out into the glasshouse, into the garden, and it's a fantastic opportunity you learn by doing. Yeah, um, and, and I mean, what you have set up over there in conjunction with your colleagues um, is unique in that it, it represents um, like a historic garden because you have about 10 beds that are all different family orientated beds and it, you can demonstrate uh, rotations, you can demonstrate IPM, I, uh, integrated pest management is something that people often ask us about. What, what do you demonstrate in that area, James? So basically we focus on IPM, integrated pest management, and how we, um, we deliver that is we look at basically from the soil, different methods of coping for pests. So there's a saying, feed your soil, not your plants. We do that through the use of green manures. So you're reducing the, the amount of fertilizers. You're looking at how you treat your pests. So biological control. And um, you've seen in the video there that the planting that I was standing around with the wildflowers, you're looking about encouraging your beneficial insects to the site. So there's a whole broad spectrum of approaches that you, um, you can 
environmentally in, friendly first off absolutely and you can yeah. introduce to your site regardless of how big how small so the, there's there's a, a lot of topics that we cover um, from organics to ipm to wildflower um, yeah. and, it's and become very selection. popular it's, it's fair to say it's become very popular in the last few years i mean our college is 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 it was it was always referred to as the college of amenity horticulture and we're proud of that but there is a, a big element of food that people are, are adopting now there is, and, and like I mean, people today that now more than ever want to know where the food is produced and how they produce it, so safely. And, and safely and sustainable. That's yeah. that's the, the major key, and and, we can and see along that with, with, with sorry, to cut, but along with we'll say what Chris was saying earlier about the glass house, we, we have food production in the glass house in in uh, in Ashtown. We which, do, yeah. uh, you know, our students get exposed to soft fruit production. That's it. There's there's um, strawberry production going on that research are carrying out trials on. So there's great links there, and, and not only in the glass house, but outside in the in the veg garden as well, where there's um, there's different trials going on in relation to integrated pest management yeah. and carrot root fly, cabbage root fly, yeah. um, and students get exposure to that on site and can see how it's mapped out, how it's monitored, and how it's assessed. So uniquely, we can offer uh, that linkage that Chagas has across all its. Uh, enterprise mixes across the country, the research, the advisory, and the training and education that we have, they're, they're inextricably linked in, in that site. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's people get to see up to, up to date research and, and how it's processed and how it's um, actually implemented. Good. So it's great. Very good. Okay. Thank you for that, James. Uh, and I'll come to my next colleague, final colleague on this point is, is Paddy Smith. Paddy, you're involved, among other things, and, and we're just finished with James talking about fruit and veg, but you also do sustainable food production. You teach that at degree level. But another area that you do is turf grass. And turf grass is quite a big area because we play sports on it. We're, we're sport mad in this country, GEA mad. It's great that we'll have a bit of football coming back maybe in the next few weeks and we can observe that. Um, but tell us a bit about what uh, what area. Sports turf science and maintenance is, is a key module, isn't it? Yeah, I'll come to that in one at, second. At, that's at level six, of course. Yeah, yeah I'll come to that in one second. Yeah. First of all, you said in relation to my own career, like yeah. in relation to um, food production, I would have used the PLP when I was studying um, the, work, work which is the old diploma, which is equivalent to yeah. level six, and I would have went across to the UK and seen what they were doing and bringing that information back. But then through my own um, knowledge and my own training, I would have maybe built up my knowledge of mechanisation and landscape construction. And then I brought that then into sports turf. And in relation to sports turf area, if we look at in relation to golf, which you mentioned, we look at the different areas from links to parkland to heathland. And then what's very big, you mentioned uh, football, but we're looking at then in rugby, you know, soccer. We're looking then cricket, cricket mm. tennis, yeah. all the different areas. But equine is really becoming very big uh, at the moment as well. And a lot of jobs out there in the industry. Currently here in the college, um, we're providing uh, sports turf training at level five, but mostly in relation to level six. We get a lot of people from the industry, John, mm. coming into the college who want to go back and get a qualification. We had 13 people that did, did it from the industry last year, if yeah, I'm not mistaken. I, I, yeah. I found an, an excellent uh, teaching environment because some of our students who are currently on the full-time course who are full-time level six wouldn't have that much experience in sports turf but they found from peer-to-peer -peer learning from people yeah. coming in from the industry yeah and louise mentioned that earlier as well that mix is very good isn't it yeah and you you mentioned there about the facilities in the glasses but we have a fantastic facility you would have seen there in the video mm. in the in the turf academy but also we've got a fantastic facility in the mechanization and workshop shed, yeah. where our students come in and they get to set up a range of machinery that's involved in managing uh, golf courses and the students maybe in the industry don't get that experience in a golf course or in a football or in you know football pitches and that but we actually get to deliver that and teach them that in the college here. That's it and I mean a lot of young people might have been watching those videos and seeing the lovely stripes that they're on the on the on the three-hole golf course I mean and, and it really is a fantastic facility among others that we have access to in Ashton but it's it, you know it's not all about driving machinery no. there's a lot of agronomy there there's a lot of science yeah, and, and going back there in relation to like, I, I always remember you'd ask the students when they first come in, they said like, tell me one type of cutting action, or tell me how many different types of cutting action there were more, and they'll always go, you know, cylinder or rotary, and you say no, well, that's in the horizontal, there's four, but how many is in the vertical, and why are we cutting in the vertical, why are we removing thatch, why are we allowing um, rain infiltration, why are we encouraging drainage, and then we have to look at then the climate, and the way the climate's changing, and we've got to say, okay, we had a drought this year, and then we had a, a big high rainfall and how we manage in our water in relation to different growing environments. So that, we're, that, we're giving them a lot more knowledge, it's fair to we're say. We're adding the science to it, John, yeah. in relation to what a lot of the students would have 
out there from the practical experience. We're at, why are they actually doing these tasks on a day-to-day -day routine? What's the important, what's the benefit to the plant? Yeah, and I mean, it's a very big employer. Like horticulture in general is quite a significant employer um, in, in, in Ireland. I mean, uh, we're, we, it's, it employs about 15, 16,000 people and it's worth approximately 400 uh, million euro to the economy. So it's a very significant element to our economy. And I, I mean, the key point is what Chagas does, uh, and these are just examples of the horticulture that, that we, we can teach, but what Chagas does, it provides a very, good formal education. And Paddy, you, you, Paddy just espoused that in terms of the depth that we go into. We go, we go from level five to level six to level seven. Our degree students can study turf grass at level six and they can study it at level seven, uh, at level seven degree. Our, our students can study fruit and veg at level five and they can study it at degree in sustainable food production. Um, in nursery stock, they can study plant propagation at level five, which is our certificate and they can go on to study nursery stock production at level seven and like they're building their knowledge the whole time and Chagas is, par is, is very much front and center of providing stepped qualifications you know which which you, you guys have actually done in your own careers and for people watching who are wondering about how do I get into horticulture um, it's not too difficult you log on to the Chagas website you look up uh, the National Botanic Gardens, and you'll see a whole host of information there about what we do, how to apply to our courses, um, and what sort of career prospects are, 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 are got from, 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 from these qualifications. And that's what we continue to deliver, uh, pandemic or not. We're in a diff very different situation. Um, you know, Louise, you referred to it earlier about it, 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 blended learning is, is, is what we're doing now. Blended learning is, is, is what we're doing. And horticulture very much suits the blended learning pandemic, doesn't it? I mean, it certainly suits uh, being able to remotely do your lectures and then come back uh, and, 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 and do your practicals. Paddy, do you want to come in there? Yeah, just so you were saying there earlier, Don, I think it's key. I know we've been on about level five, level six, but also our component students the number of component students, people are working out there in the industry, whether it's in landscape construction, and they maybe haven't got time to come back to full-time education, yeah. and they want to do a single component. And through the blended learning now, they've actually can learn it in their own time nearly, and, um, and build up the number of modules that they have to attain maybe level six, and then when they get to, sorry, level five, and then they can go back in and do it again at level six. Yeah. So they can build up over a period of time. Yeah, uh, to, give, to give people some element of that, um, to give people some element of that in our level five this year, uh, which is our certificate in horticulture and it runs from September through to May, a normal academic year. Um, we have about 40 full-time students, but we have 80 part-time component students. So that gives, that gives people some idea of, you know, that it's not all full-time, obviously. People can do an individual module, as, as you've just said, Paddy, and uh, they can come in and drop in to do that particular element of learning. So there's a, quite a lot of people out there who have joined that and they're stacking their modules to a major award. So without getting into too much technical detail about it, it's like going back to do your leaving cert and just picking one subject at a time or maybe two subjects at a time. So that's what we can offer here. We can do that at our level five and we can build that um, award for you into a major award. And you can do that in conjunction with your work or you can do it straight off the bat, straight off the leave and search and come in and finish it in one quick year and then move on to level six and level seven with our partner in WIT. Now, Louise, did you want to come yeah, in there? I just wanted to add there, you know, as well as people coming straight from school or have never worked in horticulture before, all of our courses involve a PLP that Paddy mentioned. So that's a placement. It's your work experience, work practice, where we help you find a, a, a grower or somebody in the sector and get you out there on placement. Yeah. So you get to experience and what, you're, what you've learned from the classroom into action. And it's one of the most important things, placement, because it's at that stage where you really get a taste for the industry. That's where you start creating links with people, networking, because you know, you can stay in the classroom forever, but we want people to go out there and get careers. So don't be afraid if you don't have any experience coming to us, 
you will get to do a placement whether you're in level five, level six, or level seven with people that we have um, uh, vetted in horticulture over the years. And so there is lots of opportunity. And referring back to your original, uh, uh, your own placement, Louise, yeah. and you did placement in the National Botanic Gardens, mm -hmm. and here you are today as a teacher in the National Botanic Gardens. So yeah. it serves as a, providing that very fundamental network of contact. And it's fair to say that the National Botanic Gardens, I mean, as I said, it's been 200 years training students. And when you do your placement in a place like this, you're working with really experienced and qualified uh, craftspersons. Yeah. Isn't that right? So our students would normally be out working on, 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 on section uh, a, a, as part of their placement, but they're working one-to-one -one with, with craft gardeners. Yeah, and like craft gardener is a, is a huge career option for a lot yep. of our students. And we have many, many graduates who are managing um, either private estates or public estates. And a craft gardener, you know, you're working with plants all of the time, but you're taking in all of the modules that we spoke about here today, all the subject areas from plant propagation, to turf management, to growing food, to design, everything within a craft gardener. And for somebody that would be thinking about that as a career, you would need a level seven, um, but best time to get that taster is on your placement. On your placement, yeah. It's also fair to say a lot of students might ask about, um, is it possible to, to go abroad? And, and Chagask as an organization would be very encouraging of students to, to follow some element of, of a foreign placement um, during their training, be it in horticulture, agriculture, or whatever. Um, currently, we're not encouraging it, obviously, yeah, because of the pandemic, right. and that's that's fine. Uh, but but it is fair to say that foreign placement is is yeah. is there, and we have linkages with uh, institutions uh, in many many different countries. Many. We have had lots of our graduates go to America. Yeah. We had six uh, this year. Was it six yeah. that went to America six, this year? Um, yeah. Working with some of the the best landscape companies and nurseries that are there. Um, we have had many students go to the UK, other places in Europe as well. Mm. Um, some of them have stayed on working there, yeah, yeah, you know, on yeah, a J1 yeah, visa. And yeah. um, a lot of them will come back and bring those skills with them yeah. um, and usually end up then in, you know, quite good careers afterwards. And the question does, it, it, this question's coming through on chat there, so I just want to take one. How do I organize my placement? And, and it's fair to say that the college takes a key role in organizing that placement because you're a placement officer. Yeah, so basically um, at level five, we work very closely with you and coordinating your placement based on what areas you're interested in. So level five is that sort of stepping stone where you could pick you know, one area to see if you like it as a taster. And we do, we will give you um, a, a list of hosts, but we'll also sit down and have a chat with you, you know, what areas you are interested in in the future. Uh, as you move on then to level six and level seven, uh, again, you know, you could try something different, but we work with you and we help you match up with the host. Very good, yeah. So there, there's, there, people aren't just let loose on their own. There's no. A, there's, a, there's, a, there's a match. Yeah, we have Chagas hosts yeah. that we have vetted yeah. that they're suitable for training. And, and like there are opportunities for our students to, um, to meet these hosts as well, maybe during the, the course of a, a, a normal level five. And, and Chris, as, as part of what you do with the students, you, you bring them to a, to a lot of the industry stakeholders. Um, there are nursery visits in the normal run of events and we will get back to normal at some stage, um, and there will be visits. But some of the in, some of the industry visits that you go on are, are, are very informative. For yeah, students. yeah. At, certainly at level five plant propagation, uh, we visit and and James's area there in fruit and veg as well. We visit um, various nurseries and growers in in the fruit and veg end. But from a nursery point of view, we'd uh, most of them. I would have to say are congregated in or around, or a lot of them are congregated in or around Kildare. So we would visit ones that are very relevant to the subject matter. And, you know, just arriving at a, at a grower's um, premises and seeing what they're doing mm. and feeling that mm. energy, there's yeah. this fantastic energy. The vibrancy them. that's in yeah, it, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so that's, a, that's a great experience for students and the amount of learning that they get. But even this year, even though we can't move out of the county at the moment yeah and we certainly can't be bringing groups on buses and so on but we have virtual tours yeah. organized of some of not all of the nurseries we'd normally visit but some of the nurseries so even today before i came in here i we put up the uh, virtual tour of queen's Ballon temple for oh, seed 
um, mm -hmm. storage and seed collection. That's that, that's available to our students yeah. as if they were walking as around. If they were it, walking you know, around. So and and James, resource. you've done something similar as well in relation to uh, the Phoenix Park uh, mm -hmm. and in relation yeah. to a very popular garden in Dundrum. Yeah, we've um, we organised a virtual tour of basically Airfield Estate and and the likes of the Wall Garden in, in the Phoenix Park, and it really kind of allows the students to to kind of see what they're doing, um, and and apply that to their own skills and and basically their their assignments. That uh, there's one assignment where they have to plan a, a veg program, um, in a Wall Garden, so they kind of they can see it in situ yeah. what's taking place in real life and but you're also meeting some key people and people in any of the visits or any of the tours that we would meet these are people who have gone through our education system they're people who have like maybe people sitting at home watching this program this evening thinking how could i end up you could end up hosting tours that's it like students we've passed students who are now working there and um, there's yeah. in the phoenix park there was another student there that uh, graduated there last year yeah. And so it, it's fantastic to see. And, and you mentioned about going into the industry. There's a wealth of knowledge there that, and experience that we can get to showcase to the students um, and, and have available on Moodle where the can, students can access it time and time again at, at their kind of leisure and their convenience, really. So it's a fantastic opportunity. OK, very good. Um, I'm going to go to the chat, uh, chat lines here because there's some very useful questions uh, from people coming in. Um, what is the exception rate for landscape design? Well, I think that what, what that question is, is how do you get into landscape design? So, I mean, uh, I suppose the answer to that question is we have level landscape design through garden design at level five, and then people graduate into level six. So the, the answer to that question there for <coughs> Gary is look to do garden design at level five and then look to, to progress. Would that be right, Louise? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. I would agree, yeah. yeah. Okay, can you go straight into landscape construction without doing landscape design? And that's a good question because that's kind of pointing at, do you need to go, can you do level six before you do level five? And, and the answer to that is no. You need to have done your level five in horticulture, your certificate in horticulture, before you go into full-time level six. Except in the case, and I'll bring Paddy in now for a second, except in the case maybe where you have people who have a lot of experience in the industry who for one reason or another haven't done formal qualifications in the past and we can accept them into level six given certain conditions but the normal route for young people progressing through our formal education is level five then into level six that that would be the normal construct so paddy do you want to come yeah, in there I, yeah i just wanted to say there in relation to we are we provide a very, an excellent level five in landscape construction and maintenance where we currently have people who are working in the industry who've got their own business who are actually coming in and through that level five we're actually showing students a range of how to produce construction detail drawings how to lay pave and how to build walls how to look after soft areas how to um, sow seabeds using the modern equipment so yeah i would say if you wanted to really look at level six in landscape construction maybe come in and if you want to look at this um, picking landscape construction at part level five or pick it as a component and see is that yeah. really for you pick it as a component and like it is a, it's a short component uh, you're doing it currently one day a week yeah with uh, 24 students 24 students have elected to book. pick it yeah and i think it's 50 50 between a full-time full -time and part-time yeah come in and doing it the so they're coming in to do it on one one day a week and it really suits them to do that yeah, yeah. and we're offering uh, whatever we can in relation to online um, and again it's been pointed out it's been recorded and it's uploaded for um, for over 40% of the module, and then the other 60, we're providing the training in a safe um, in manner, um, following all protocol. Very good. Um, just two questions here that I'll, I'll, I'll take. The, there, um, Claire is asking about the cost of doing uh, level five. So level five is what we call a major award. There's 120 credits in it. And the cost of doing that is 990 euros. That's the cost of doing the full time level five awards so to do it on a part-time basis then depending on how many credits are in each module there's a different price attached so you could you could say uh, approximately 200 euros for individual subjects between 175 and 200 euros to do an individual subject so when you when you balance that out that's not that expensive in the greater scheme of things when we when we talk about course fees uh, overall and, uh, and 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 i'm sure you know if you wanted to to come onto our website 
uh, contact our office, we can talk to you in more detail about that. But 990 euros, Claire, is the price of the full-time level five. Um, do we get many mature students? So <laughs> this, that's a very good question. And it's, uh, it's a question that some people uh, are, 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 are worried about because maybe mature people are worried about coming into classrooms full of 18 and 19 year olds. Um, we get we get we get we get mature students on our course, but as was alluded to earlier, there's experiential knowledge coming on our course. We have a lot of students um, that are career changers, that are career finishers, um, but there's a lot of people in our program that have done other courses. There's no doubt about that. Um, we have a lot of young people in our programs this year, and it shows a real energy in horticulture. There's a real verve there to get involved in 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 something. Um, that's environmentally friendly, that can contribute to our footprint, um, environmental footprint, and, and we, we welcome that. We absolutely welcome that. But don't be, don't be worried. Don't be worried. Uh, we, do, we do get mature, mature students, Hillary, and we're happy, we're happy to, to, to take them. Um, a, a question that, that might come sometimes as well is, uh, what's the minimum qualification I should attain in horticulture? So all of you people have done very high qualifications in horticulture, but maybe Chris, to, to, to ask you in your experience, where would you see the minimum qualification for people going into industry? What, what should they be aspiring to get? I think anybody going into a career in an industry should be aspiring to go as far as they possibly can, yeah. to be quite honest. So, um, so depending on what, they, what ambition they have, I suppose, in terms of the industry, the various levels. Level six is a minimum. I'd level say six, level yeah. six would be a minimum. Which is what we call advanced certificate. Yeah. yeah. So I'd say level six would be a minimum. Two-year course. Two-year course. Yeah. And then your level seven um, past degree, basic degree is the next step up yeah. from that. And that would allow you to get into management sort yeah. of areas and work your way through. And of course, once you get into that sort of a position, um, you can then continue within yeah. education to, to further develop. And, and many people have. I, I've done it. I think most of us here have yeah. done it. Um, and I know lots of people out there who started off at my level four sort of uh, space and worked their way up along to management levels within many yeah. parts of the industry. Yeah, uh, indeed. Uh, I, I was in the, uh, in the herbarium, which is a fundamental part of the botanic gardens here during the week. And uh, uh, there's a past student there that came through our, our degree and he's now doing a PhD yeah. uh, uh, in, in the OPW. And we've sent yeah. students from here through from the original level four courses that we would have taught level five courses to PhD courses in Trinity and UCD. It's quite possible to do it. So yeah. it's very possible, very attainable. Yeah. I, I might just mention one or two things about, about the, the college year. I mean, we follow the normal college year. We go from <coughs> September right through to May. Uh, our, our, our course uh, finishes in May usually, and then we have verification. Results are, are passed out to students, and we have a graduation every December. That's how we, we, we run our programs here. So we very much follow the academic, uh, uh, academic year. It, placement can be done during the summer. It can be done out, out, out of the academic year, and we, we facilitate that, and Louise, Louise looks after that. Um, so students follow a very normal college academic year. Um, in our college, we would have generally have small classes. You know, you won't walk into a, into a classroom in a Chagas Horticultural College and find hundreds of students. Uh, now, mind, mind you, we have 120 students approximately doing level five, but they're all in different pods, part-time, full-time, socially distanced groups. Very much uh, huge demand for horticulture this year. Um, in our degree programs, we have about 20 to 22 students in each class. Um, and in our level six students, in our level six courses, we'd have uh, about 30 plus students doing level six. So our classes aren't massive. We, we would know all of our students by, by first name, I would say, whether we call them by their first name or not. <laughs> but we certainly get on very well with our students. They get on very well with us. Um, and we form a very close network with our students. And, and I'd often refer to the, 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 the director of the National Botanic Gardens, Dr. Matthew Jeb, and the curator who has retired, uh, Paul, Paul Maher, who would, say, who would say always that when you do horticulture in Glasnevin, you become part of a very, very strong network that is connected to Glasnevin. And there's a huge, huge history associated with this location. And again, everyone that goes through the doors becomes part of that history. So that's, that's, that's really important. Folks, I'm conscious of the time and it's just turned five o'clock and uh, we said we'd run this event for one hour. So 
uh, we're concluding our event. I want to thank you, the audience, for joining us um, uh, in our classroom three on Zoom. Um, you've partaken in this, and our students have been partaking in Zoom classes for the last six weeks here in the college, and thankfully it's going well. Everyone has kind of got to grips with the technology in some shape or form, and it's something we, we embrace. Um, we look forward to meeting new students every year. We look forward to welcoming people to our College of Horticulture. Um, I think you should consider a career in horticulture now more than ever. I think, I think people, as Louise said earlier, what, 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 what horticulture needs is, is people who have a genuine love and passion for working with plants, for working outside, for getting their hands dirty, and for being creative. It's a fantastic career. Um, there's so many careers out there that young people are exposed to. And what it involves is, is, is sitting in an office looking at a screen. You know, it's, it's difficult. It's stressful. So many people work in horticulture and their stresses drift away. It's a fantastic career choice um, for people to consider. And I think we need more people, as Louise said, who have that passion for horticulture, for plantsmanship, for design, for creativity, and for doing things well with the soil and with the environment that we work in. Um, Chagas Goffer is a unique product. As was said earlier, uh, and Chris mentioned, the linkages that go on in Chagas between education, research, and advisory work. And there's no organization in the country that does that except us in Chagas. Um, and we're, we're, we're proud to do that with our colleagues in, in, in Chagas in horticulture, in the horticultural development department. Um, we have a fantastic footprint here, uh, courtesy of, of working with the OPW. We have a fantastic footprint six kilometers from here over in Ashtown. Um, and as I said, between the two centers, we have approximately 80 acres. So um, that's a decent farm by anyone's standards. <laughs> um, I think we have some highly skilled staff. Uh, we have some excellent colleagues. You've met some of them today. I'm, I'm deeply indebted to my colleagues for being able to uh, provide us with this platform. Um, thank you, Louise. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, James. And thank you, Paddy. And thank you, Deirdre Walsh, who's behind the scenes here. Uh, without her efforts, this event would not take place. Um, OK, all queries come to the Chagas website, National Botanic Gardens. We're happy to take them. We're happy to answer any query. Um, and we'll get back to any questions that we haven't got to on the chat function uh, directly. Thank you for your time this evening. and. The best to look. Sloan.